Well, hello everyone, Philosopher Stoner 666 here. Hope you guys can hear me. So anyway, yeah, uh, pick my nose. Making a video. So I want to address two subjects in this video. And I'm not sure how long I'm going to go on about them. I'm just going to try and say what I want to say and try and keep it concise. But I might ramble a little bit well like i usually do but um yeah two subjects the first one is i watched a david ike video on the channel sean atwood now i've mentioned him before in a couple of my previous videos my more recent ones um so yeah i believe in freedom of speech i believe everybody has the right to an opinion um, as long as you're not advocating violence to kill someone or libel or slander, you can pretty much say whatever you want. That's my stance on things, again, in the intellectual arena. But, you know, you should have to show your face and make an argument and be held accountable for what you say. That's, that's basically, I think that's fair. So, uh, yeah, David Icke, interesting character. Um, there's a lot of kernels of corn in the shit of what he says that make sense, that are rational. Um, he does tend to have a sort of academic discipline, but in a lot of the stuff that he's been pumping out recently, I don't think there's that much discipline. Like this video I watched, like I said, it's on Sean Atwood's channel, one of the more recent ones that he posted where he interviews David Icke for like an hour. That's the only one I've watched, and... He makes all these arguments about the coronavirus and claiming it's a hoax and all this stuff. Um, I've seen videos of Italy where their hospitals are clearly overwhelmed. Now, you know, a lot of people saying, oh, well, it only affects the old and all this sort of stuff. And it's like that, that that's interesting in of itself because it sort of reveals our morality. You know, morality is often linked to this whole survival thing. And... In my culture in Canada, the North, the Arctic, the Inuit Eskimo people um, were known to say when an old person got sick or broke their leg or whatever on an iceberg or whatever, they would let the ice drift go out and basically leave grandma or grandpa behind if they got sick because there was nothing else they could do. So in a lot of ways, their society hasn't really changed. So a lot of people are like, well, it only affects the old people. So, so what if they die? You know, what does that mean? Does it mean old people don't matter? You know, so, so anyways, so he goes on and he talks about how this, you know, this virus is a hoax and there's this conspiracy to, you know, change the world usher in a cashless society, what he calls the Hunger Games Society, where it's all digital currency and it's a one-world government and it's the new world order. I might have mentioned in one of my other videos a quote by Alan Moore. And again, I'm just paraphrasing. None of this is an academic exercise, by the way. Like, I'm not citing sources. I'm not doing anything. I do respectfully say it's just my opinion but anyway so alan moore talks about how it's it's more comforting to believe that someone's in charge when the reality is that nobody's in charge and i believe that to be true so what david ike's going on about he he's pushing an agenda you know his own agenda he's trying to sell his book he's making these sensationalist claims he has an agenda you know, you know, you have to, you have to look at it like, yeah, what's in it for him? And, you know, making all this, saying all this stuff, like, you know, going on about China and yes, they are authoritarian and they are communist, but, um, you know, it, it's, our perspective in the West is skewed by the fact that we are, we have plenty of living space. We have plenty of room, lower population, affluent societies. We have a lot of freedoms and privileges that the rest of the world doesn't enjoy. And we have a lot of luxury that, again, the rest of the world doesn't enjoy. 
that we can judge, we can go, oh, the Chinese, oh, terrible authoritarian communists. I lived near a city that was near Shanghai. Shanghai is a city of 24, 25 million people. I forget the exact number. I'd have to go look it up. That's just one city. Now, my country, Canada, we have around 32 million people. And that's a, we're a big country, you know. So Shanghai, 24 million people, has almost as many people as there are in my entire country. And that's just one city. You know, how would you control that? You know, with all of our idealism and high, you know, getting on our high horse and judging. Seriously, how would you deal with that? The reality of the circumstance is that there's so many people, uh, you know, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet kind of thing that, yeah, you know, he, he talked about how China has this, and it is kind of dystopian and authoritarian. They have a social credit system where you basically, you get points for, you know, the cameras and stuff for watching you and you get points for, you know, good behavior, bad behavior. And if you have low enough points, then you can't travel, you can't do stuff. You know, it, it sounds creepy by our standards, but again, they got so many people. How do you keep a lid on that? How do you control that? You know, it, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible to say, but we don't have the balls to deal with anything in any kind of a, a rational way. You know, that the, you know, the, David Icke did say something true in his this video that I watched that the psychopaths and idiots that are in charge of things do so with the acquiescence of everybody else. Well, you know, you kind of do need to acquiesce in a certain way. You kind of do have to maintain this sort of order. And how do you do that with so many people? I lived in China for two years. You know, so it's, like I said, it's very easy for us to judge. Anyway, so he makes all these claims. And I found this video that he made. Um, he's making all these claims, quoting these people. In the link, the description box in the video, he doesn't link to any articles. He doesn't link to any videos. He's not really backing up what he's saying. He's just making these statements because he is so certain in his mind that there's this cult and there's this agenda that he's looking at things to fit to fit his own agenda. It's called confirmation bias. It's basically looking for evidence that suits, you know, what you already think, right? So like an atheist will look for evidence to disprove God um, because he doesn't believe in God because he's an atheist. Um, a Christian will look for evidence and try to skew things to prove that there is a God because they're a Christian and they believe in God, that there isn't anything objective. So again, he is just, he's just one guy. It's just his opinion. And you got to do your own research and you got to think for yourself. You know, that I am for. And, you know, that can be problematic. But still. So, you know, I'm willing to hear out David Icke and hear what he's saying. Um, and, you know, he makes an argument and he, like I said, he brings up a lot of good points, but I don't know. I'm not convinced. Like a lot of people saying it's a hoax, this virus, and that it's caused by 5G. You know, I have 5G internet in my home and I'm not getting sick. I'm not convinced. But again, I'm just one guy that's circumstantial, that's, you know, Maybe in five months from now, maybe I'll get sick. I mean, who the fuck knows? But still, I'm not convinced. Um, I did mention in one of my other videos before that there are people, conspiracy theorists online, Dr. Paul Cottrell and Dr. Francis Boyle, that claim that this virus is a bioweapon. But again, their opinion is qualified by the fact that they're a PhD, they're a doctor. And, it, and they do say in their videos, well, you got to do your own research and make up your own mind. This is just our opinion. We think the virus was engineered. Now, whether it was intentionally released or unintentionally released, you know, that's a matter for, open for debate. But this is what we think. And so, you know, fine. You know, is David Icke a doctor? Is David Icke a PhD? You know, again, he obviously he has some sort of academic discipline he obviously reads a lot he reads the news and stuff you know he's, he comes across as being intelligent and competent 
but like I said, I just found this this last thing that I watched. I wasn't entirely convinced. It just didn't, you know, it didn't make sense to me. Um, and you know, it's it's you want to see an agenda, so there will be an agenda. Like for a long time, um, when there was this conspiracy theory called PizzaGate, it brought up these uh, pedophile symbols the infinity circle and the infinity triangle and they were used as codes and all these restaurants and stuff anyways you can go look into it but i started seeing spirals all over the place does that mean that they're pedophiles you know i had one piece of evidence you know fbi pedophile symbol logos i started seeing them all over the place this you know again that by itself doesn't mean the person's a pedophile I do agree, like with Ike, that yeah, you know, there's these psychopaths do tend to be in power, and there's a lot of idiots running the world, and yeah, it is corrupt and it's wrong and all that stuff. But like I said, I'm just not entirely convinced. I don't really have much else to say on the subject. So uh, yeah, um, I have my doubts. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about briefly was the recent drama uh, with Gary Mosher otherwise known as Amendum, he made some comments, um, and it's caused a whole shit tsunami of drama, especially I'm on an anti-natalist thing on Discord. Amanda, uh, Forever Wolf Films, otherwise known as Old Fan, has basically been kicked out of it, and so anyways, Gary made these comments about benign rape. Now, I won't get into that too much, um, I wouldn't use, I, you know, I don't think that that's appropriate to say benign rape, but what he was doing was saying that to demonstrate a point, right? So like not all crimes are equal, even though they have the same result. So say somebody fires a gun into the air, they shoot a bullet into the air, that bullet winds up killing someone is not the same as someone you know going right up to someone and shooting them in the face now the result was the same the person died but the intention and everything else in one case it is relatively benign the other case it's more malicious uh gary isn't that great he's he has a weird sort of charisma sometimes he's funny he makes these funny comments but on the whole yeah he's a pretty dark character his philosophy uh, it, you know it's dark um our sensibilities don't like it because the truth can be kind of scary. So anyways, like I was watching one of his recent um, what the fuck videos and he made a, he started talking a thought experiment about the movie Soylent Green. Now for those that don't know, it's an old movie from the 70s with Charlton Heston about this dystopian future where, you know, there's no food and all this. So they, they, the, the people that die, um, they, um, you know, the people that die, they convert them into this green paste stuff and use it as food. And he was saying in the video, and, you know, I, that, that movie when I was a teenager traumatized me and, my mother was always very pro, you know, population control. Anyways, the movie traumatized me when I was a kid or like when I was a teenager. And it sort of laid the early foundations for my antinatalism. You know, definitely population control was an issue, that sort of thing. Um, so what Gary was saying in this video was that, and again, I'm paraphrasing here. I'm not going to go, you know, show a clip of the video or whatever, because he, he went on about it quite a bit. He was basically just saying, well, you know, really, what's the problem with that? And again, he was saying it like, as long as it's turned into something that's like a paste, like a potato chip, really, what would be the big deal? And I can kind of see where he's coming from that, yeah, logically, really, what's the problem with it? You know, people, it would help people get over their ego of dying, you know, the, the whole dying problem. And... Just saying, if it could be done, really, what's so terrible about it? It's, you know, he, he does mention in the video where he talks about, yeah, it would be evil, say, if they were breeding babies to do this to them intentionally, 
to like farm the babies to turn them into food. But he was saying, oh, it only really applies to people that are like old people that are already dead anyway. And he's logically saying, well, what would be so terrible about that? Now, that's that's pretty dark. That offends most people's sensibilities. Like, I have always thought, and I still maintain it, that, you know, cannibalism is obviously wrong. You know, it's terrible. It's a bad thing. Um, it's like one of the worst things you can do. It is probably the worst thing you can do. But still, he 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 was saying it to sort of challenge our perceptions. Like, we live in a world of total bullshit, right? So when a person dies, right, they die. You know, we have a funeral. We have all this pomp and ceremony. We have a wake. We do all these rituals and we do all this stuff for the comfort of people that are alive, that were close to the victim, to help them deal with the grieving process. When things like this virus happen, um, all of that pomp and ceremony goes out the window and people get chucked into the mass grave or thrown down the chute into the crematorium and die and are forgotten. And that's most people. Most people just wind up becoming a statistic. And then in, in certain cases, like a celebrity death or a star athlete death, oh, it's a terrible tragedy. And like I said, most other people, would they just become a statistic that really we're living in a world of bullshit. We do not want to face reality and that the, the facts of the circumstance are that the reality is quite grim. It's terrible. We are not living in an ideal scenario. So, anyway, so he makes these comments about benign rape, the soil and green thing. And yeah, it's, it's all pretty dark. It's all, you know, it's, it's terrible stuff. Um, and then he, he went into the whole, and he's been gotten into shit for this before, about the whole uh, euthanizing cats thing. And he simply makes the argument that, okay, you take a cat off the street and you put it to sleep. Right. And then, you know, sterilize it, cut out its its private parts, basically, and then throw it back onto the street to eat garbage. What's the point in doing that? Because we have some sort of sensibility that it should still be alive or something. When really, you're not doing it a favor that if you're going to put it to sleep, you might as well just put it, you know, why wake it up? And, you know, again, it's it's terrible. It's cold. It's it's a grim circumstance that I just think people are don't want to face the reality of really how fucked up and grim this place really is. Really is, yes, it's terrible. So he goes on in his videos that, you know, of course, if, he, if, if we lived in an ideal world, a perfect circumstance, yes, that he would like to, you know, have the most graceful exit possible. And then he jokes in this interview that he did with Amandum, Amandum on the, uh, the sorry, uh, not Amandum, with Amanda, on this podcast episode that he's like, yeah, if he could have his way, you know, he would buy all the animals a hooker and have throw them a little party and then euthanize them and then put them to sleep in a matter of seconds, give them their 52 cents of chemicals and put them to sleep. And, you know, his, you know, this is when he makes me laugh because he says, oh yeah, buy them a hooker. And it's kind of a, you know, a greasy thing to say, but it really does show just how absurd most of the things that we gain comfort or a sense of happiness from really are. They're, they're crass and stupid. They're, they're, they're addictions. They're, they're, it's stupid bullshit. It's, it's crass. It's stupid. It's, it's a pointless addiction. And, you know, he makes a comment like that and it really does reveal, well, that's how really how fucking stupid it all really is. So anyways, he's like, yeah, you know, buy the animals a hooker, buy them all a hooker and, uh, you know, give them some candy, throw them a party, and then put them to sleep. That's not the world we're living in here. And that he's arguing that if you take this philosophy, this antinatalism thing, it's not just something to be discussed as an academic exercise. Once you get the arguments and accept the arguments, it's time to establish some sort of a game plan and you know, try and figure out, well, how do you put an end to all of this? And then he proposes an idea like drilling a bunch of holes to the the core of the earth and putting nukes and then just basically blowing the whole fucking thing up and it's over in 10 seconds you know and he sort of says well how many seconds is too many seconds you know but again most people don't want to face up to the fact that yeah like it, it's all it, it sort of offends our sensibilities but 
what's the alternative? What's the, what's the choice? What choices do we have here? There is no clean getaway. There is no perfect way to end this. It goes back to what I was saying before with David Icke's comments is that, you know, yeah, China might be screwed up, like I said, authoritarian country, communist dictatorship, whatever. Well, what's your plan? How do you plan to run that society? How do you want to deal with it, with the imperfect reality? You know, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible to think like that, but we don't have the balls to fucking do anything. And then that's why this, this game of life continues and people continue to suffer and the animals continue to suffer because we don't want to accept the logical facts that, yeah, it is all kind of fucked up and it is all kind of crass and stupid and stupid, silly addictions that keep us on the Pollyanna train of loving life. You know, and it's a tough pill to swallow when people don't want to swallow it. So Gary has clearly said that unless you have a definite solution, like doing something, say, like violence, don't do it unless you have the definite solution. So Gary is not advocating for rape or advocating for violence or doing anything until you have that 100% guaranteed solution. But people don't want to even discuss it. And so the lengths of the irrationality of all these people that he just makes these comments and says these things. And yeah, like I said, they are dark and they do offend our sensibilities, but he is making a point. He's doing it to demonstrate a point and sort of shake us out of our complacency. And it's, it's quite terrible. It's, it's, you know, so anyways, so they want to, you know, ban him, take away all his videos. Uh, just people just can't deal with it uh, you know amanda made a video and she sort of said you know these people are like these sort of people that need the uh, crust cut off their toast for them you know it really is really is silly um so yeah um Anyways, I think I've talked about those two subjects enough. It's it's all pretty grim. It's like I said, it's a tough pill to swallow, and I don't think personally that people are ever gonna swallow the pill. That this will go on until the bitter end. You know, we are not going to sit drinking our tea with our pinkies out and say, oh yes, life is quite terrible. Let's all just end it and do it in a nice, clean, democratic way. Do it, you know. A perfect solution. There is no perfect solution here. You know, it's 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 quite grim. It's quite uh, terrible. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but but yeah, you know, um, like I said, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Um, like I said, as, as I said, like as long as you're not doing libel or slander, as long as you hold yourself accountable and you're not advocating direct action, like direct violence and stuff. You can pretty much be able to say whatever the fuck you want, pretty much. And, you know, people just don't want to make an argument. They get emotional. They don't want to, they, they just can't accept certain things. And then as a consequence, they want to shut everybody up. And these antinatalists that are doing this, again, we're never going to achieve antinatalism if their way of thinking predominates. Like, it just won't happen. You know, it'll just be these sort of sort of putting band-aids on things kind of solution, like, you know, euthanizing everybody so that they can live out their stupid, silly life and suffer and, and die anyway. You know, they don't want it. They don't have the guts to do things. You know, we don't have the guts, right? Like, well, all this stuff going on in the world, we're basically headed to the next Great Depression, and a lot of things happened with the Great Depression. A lot of things came out of it, like World War II and the rise of fascism and the rise of communism. Those were very extreme ideologies. But people were looking for solutions, and again, the imperfect circumstance that I've always been of the perspective that had I been born in Germany around that time, around World War II, yeah, I would have been a Nazi. If I had been born in Russia around the, the time that all that happened, yeah, I would have been a communist. You know, like, we have a, we pay lip service to a lot of things. Like, oh, yes, we care. Like, the, so the homeless, for instance, right? Oh, yes, we care. 
about the homeless, we give them a sleeping bag, give them some food, and we just let them rot on the street. So no, we don't really love them. We don't really care about them. What You know what the fascists did, what the Nazis did? They rounded up all the homeless people and said, here's a shovel, you're digging a ditch for the railroad, and if you don't dig the ditch, we're putting a bullet in your fucking head, and that's it. So get to work, and you know we'll feed you, and we'll give you a nice shiny uniform, and shut up and be happy. And, you know, that's terrible, right? That's an extreme solution, but, you know, it did re- achieve a result as terrible as it was. And again, what's their people's fucking plan? <clears throat> as authoritarian and horrible as that sounds, you know, it's terrible. Well, how do you intend to solve it? What's what's your fucking plan? You know, really, that, I guess that's my point here is it's it's is it's all the options are unsavory everything in a way is sort of it's all sort of distasteful it's all sort of dystopian scenarios and you know i've talked about in my other videos right the anarchists right with the dupes that put the communists into power that's what happens when you have idealism idealism is not running things here we got to live in the real world and deal with things as they are and it's not it's a very tough pill to swallow very very tough pill to swallow so you know i don't know i don't have claim to have all the answers i don't claim to have all the solutions i'm just a pseudo intellectual this is just my opinion and again my arguments and stuff are not act there's no academic rigor here i'm not citing sources i'm not doing anything but i'm not trying to persuade people of one opinion or the other that successfully anyway so you know i don't personally think that an will ever catch on that it'll ever be done voluntarily and this mess that exists is just going to carry on forever because yeah people don't want to accept it because it is it's terrible it's hard to accept it's sort of like why <clears throat> I haven't accepted my own fate and just, you know, done the graceful exit thing yet. But for some reason, it's irrational, but I can't accept it. So, you know, we are all flawed. We are all human. Um, the, 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 the mess that we exist in is a mess, and there are no perfect solutions here, and there are no utopian scenarios. It's all pretty bleak. And by the looks of things, it's going to get bleaker. And honestly, I don't know who to believe anymore. You know, maybe David Icke is right. Maybe Dr. Paul Cottrell is right. Honestly, I don't know. Um, really, just, you know, I've said in my other videos, just be prepared. Uh, practice self-reliance. And basically, you got to accept that you're on your own, you know. People are not going to back you up. If they get even just the slightest bit offended, yeah, you're on your own. You're, you're done. So, you know, that's, I guess that's my message. And yeah, I guess I've rambled on enough here. I said that like five minutes ago and then I just keep going. It's kind of funny. But, uh, oh yes, wanted to mention before I end this video that uh, a user, Lynn Harrison, donated to me yet again. Thank you kindly. See me bow. See, I'm bowing here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm bowing. Yes, I'm bowing. I'm not doing that to be patronizing or anything. It's sincere. It's thank you very much. I appreciate the donation. I'm amazed that anybody even watches this crap and that someone likes my videos. I'm glad you do. And, you know, I'm glad that you think that I'm smart, even though I'm not really that smart. I, I'm just a nerd. I just read a bunch of books. So, yeah, uh, my, my attempt with this wasn't to totally destroy David Icke. Again, like I said, I like him. He's a free thinker. I agree with a lot of stuff that he says. But on this, these things, yeah, I'm not totally convinced. But that's just me. I'm not really that coherent either. And like I said, the full bullshit with Gary, I'm kind of on his side. But I still have to sort of say, yeah, it is. What The stuff he says is kind of, it is, you know, it's on its face. It's repulsive. But you know, uh, people just don't want to accept the hard pills to swallow. So anyways, oh my goodness, half an hour long video. Thank you for watching. Philosopher Stoner 666 out.